My name is Michael Pugilis. I'm 18 years old. I play football and I'll be continuing my football and academic career at Susquehanna University to study finance. My name is Tyler Fitch. I'm 18 years old. I have an older brother who's 21. I play varsity tennis for Eastern Area High School. The school I'll be attending is West Virginia University, and my future plans are to be a musical theater major and be a Broadway performer and entertainer. My name is Hannah Wheeler and I'm 18 years old. I have a sister who is 21 years old and I will be attending Shippensburg University. I play field hockey for the high school and I will be continuing my field hockey career and majoring in marketing. My name is John Barna, I'm 18 years old, and I have two sisters. I played on the Easton soccer team for three years, and I plan to attend the University of South Carolina, majoring in business next year. My name is Alexandria Austin, I'm 18 years old. I have a younger brother, and I will be attending DeSales University, majoring in musical theater. My name is Jacqueline Fine. I'm 18 years old. I have a younger brother, and I plan on attending Lafayette College to play lacrosse and study engineering. Hey, what's up? Hey. What are you doing? Hanging tonight? out. Um, I don't know. Why? Do you want to do something? Do you want to go to the movies with Alex and I? Yeah. yeah. Do what? you want to text her? Yeah, what time? Uh, like, seven? All right, I'll, I'll look up the times and then seven? I'll text you and Alice. Okay, okay. cool, All right. thanks. All right, bye. Bye, Mom. Um, John's here. We're going to the movies with Jacqueline. All right, honey, be careful. Drive safely. Will do. Love you. you. Love you, too. All right, Mom, I'm going to leave for that party now. Okay, um, they're drinking tonight, right? Well... There might be drinking, but I'm not gonna drink. All right. Well, if there's any drinking at all, if you drink anything, call me. I don't care what time it is. You can oh. call me. I can come pick you up wherever. Okay. All right. I love, love you. you. Bye. Bye. Have a good time. Thanks. Call me if you need anything. I will. Careful. All right. Let's see what I'm gonna wear. Party. So it'll be hot. Something like this. Jeans. Jacqueline and Alex. Uh, what time's that? Uh, 9 o'clock, but I'm going to leave now. Alright, be careful. All right. I'll see, see you ya. later. Bye. Dad. Um, I'm going to go out with my friends now. Alright. What time will you be back? 
Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna pick up Michael and uh, Hannah. Alright. Alright. Oh. Alright, I'll see ya. Bye. I actually leave the end of August. Too early. I only leave August 16th. But throughout the, like throughout the whole summer, like I'm we're okay. Oh, throughout the whole summer, we're we have to like train and start for lacrosse. Yeah, how about you, Alex? I don't know. Where are you I haven't looked. I just made my deposit like last week. Oh yeah. To sales. Oh uh, yeah, I did too. Are you gonna do music there? Yeah, musical theater. Oh my god, that's awesome. Their program's really good, so I'm excited. Do they do a lot of shows? Yeah, they do like two musicals, like one in the fall, one in the spring, and then that's they awesome. do like little things throughout the whole year. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, like I was gonna say, like Lafayette, like does a lot, like, a lot of like drama things, where like yeah. they have Smurfs. <laughs> It's so weird, like during the day that they do this. I mean, you like go inside. Oh, hot prime smells so good. Oh my god. <laughs> Tyler, you're so drunk. I'm yes, you are. I'm not. No, I'm just gonna call my mom. Come on. I'm okay. I'm okay. It's just not bad. No, it's bad, come guys. On. Come on, what's one shot? You guys should not even go. be driving. Just go. Let's go. Just go. Come on. No, you really should not be driving. Come on. I'm saying.
There's a lime green one on Cobb Chill. It's like parked on yeah, the parking driveway. It. And there's an orange one there too. Yeah. Let me help you. Let me help Jack. 911, number 36, where is your emergency? Uh, on the Avenue and South Greenwood Avenue. Where is it really bad? On the Avenue and South Greenwood Avenue and Palmer Sorry. And what is your phone? John! 610 3194. 610 3194. They look really bad. How many vehicles are involved? Listen. Are there any injuries? Yeah, somebody got out. There are people in the other car. There are people in the other car. What did you do? Chuck! 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 Are you okay?
What's your name? Tyler. Tyler what? Fitch. Tyler Fitch? Okay. How much did you have to drink? Three, four, four beers. How long ago? Like an hour or two ago, maybe, maybe less. Okay, Tyler. My name's Sergeant Vangelo, Palmer Township Police Department. I'm going to demonstrate some field sobriety tests to you. Do you understand? Okay. Okay? I don't want you to do anything until I tell you to do so. Do you understand that? I'm going to demonstrate the test. And after I demonstrate it, I'm going to ask you to perform it. Do you understand that? Okay. I want you to watch me. Okay? Stand there and watch me. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to stand like this with your feet apart. Then you're going to put one foot in front of the other. You're going to take nine steps, heel to toe. Two, three, four, five, all the way up to nine. You're going to spin around. We're going to do it again. One, two, three, four, all the way up to nine. Do you understand? Go ahead and perform the test. good enough. Alright, turn and face me. The next test is you're going to stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Okay, don't do it until I tell you to do so. You're going to put your hands out to your side. You're going to lean back a little bit. You're going to close your eyes. I'm going to tell you to put your right finger to your nose or your left finger to your nose. Do you understand? Okay, go ahead and get in position. Put your arms out to your side. Lean back a little bit. Close your eyes. All right, put your right finger to your nose. Now your left. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. Tyler Fitch, I'm placing you under arrest for driving under influence involved in death or serious bodily injury. Do you understand? Carries a maximum penalty of five years in jail. You understand this? Just relax, just relax. Officer Diallo, well, we're gonna do one more test. It's a preliminary breath test, okay? What I want you to do is take a deep breath and blow into the tube until I tell you to stop. Ready? Blow. Blow hard. Keep blowing. Stop. 0.12. Relax, relax. Hold on, man. Relax. You're under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you. Do you understand these rights? If I lay here, if I just lay here, would you lie with me? Just forget the world. Don't cry. If I 
When you left that evening to go to the movies, I would never and could never imagine that because of the choice to drink and drive, that my son would never smile again or fulfill his dreams. We just can't understand why our smart, cheerful, beautiful son was taken from our lives because of such a selfless, selfless act. John lives his life every day to its very best. When I think of John, I see his big brown eyes that sparkled and his beautiful smile. I hear his infectious laugh. I feel his warm hugs. I do not know what I'm going to do without that smile, those eyes, and the hugs. My name is Tyler Fitch, and John Barnett's dead because of me. I didn't, I didn't mean for it to happen. I was just having fun with my friends. No one was supposed to get hurt. I never thought this could happen to me. I knew John. We grew up together. We went to Tracy Elementary School and we all schooled together. And we were never close friends, but we were acquaintances. Everyone always loved John. John liked hiking and hanging out with his friends. He loved going on adventures. I was told that after high school, John and I were going to University of South Carolina and major in business. And then he wanted to join the Peace Corps after college. None of that is going to happen now because of me. On March 5th, 2006, while out for my birthday breakfast with Ms. Capici, we received a text message that two Eastern High School Junior had died in a car accident. Michael Cummings and Amanda Schultz. I must have been in shock because I really did not really hit me until later. I personally did not know Amanda, but I did know Michael. Suddenly, all I could remember was his smile that would light up a room, and a laugh that was infectious to all around him. And all I could see was the number nine on his football jersey. It is my honor to introduce Marissa Cummings, sister to Michael, who I truly admire for so many reasons and in so many ways. On March 5th, 2006, my brother and Mr. Schultz's daughter, Amanda, got into a car with a drunk driver behind the wheel. With the intentions of doing, some, doing a friend a favor, but when they made the one decision, it changed lives forever. One decision and gone. Mike and Amanda lost their lives. Though the driver walked away, he spent eight years in prison and risked going back if he ever breaks parole. Even the adult who bought the alcohol went to prison. The weapon of people was affected and spreads far and wide. I lost my big brother. I went to Easton, my brother Matt went to Easton, Michael went to Easton. He was heavily involved here. He played baseball and was the quarterback on the football team. His and Amanda's deaths impacted so many people. Even your own teachers will remember. After losing my brother, I've learned that things don't magically get better. There is no other side. It's been 11 years and two months to the day. And though some days are good and some are bad, none are easy. Not a day goes by that I don't relive that day for playing a scene in my head. There's not a day that goes by that I don't miss my brother so much it hurts. Grief is not something you ever get to finish or complete. It's not something you get to move on from. Mike will always be missing. My heart will always be incomplete because of this. I don't think you can grasp the depth of all this unless you have lived it, which I pray that no one of you ever do, or ever put anyone else in this situation. You were someone's child, brother, sister, cousin, grandchild, friend. My brother didn't go to that party or get in that car expecting it to be his last. It's never in the plan. It just takes one decision. What I ask today is that you be careful and be smart. I'm going to talk to you about my Amanda. It all starts June 18th, 1989. Happens to be Father's Day. 
My wife at 10.30 says, contractions are pretty regular. So we get to the hospital by 11, and by 11.25, Amanda is already born. She came in very quickly, but also went out too quickly. So everything changed starting March 4th. Amanda said she wanted to go out that night. I said, no way. She had been putting off a video program that she had to do for our auto insurance. And I said, you got to do that program. So she watched this video about auto safety. And then I let her go out. The next morning, I had already planned to head down to Philadelphia. My oldest son, Ryan, was going to Drexel at the time. And then I headed back. And my younger son, Eric, calls me. He says, Dad, we can't find him in. I can't say it was always unusual. On a Sunday morning, we couldn't find her. But I could see, I could hear concern in his, in his voice. So I get home, call her cell phone, and go straight to voicemail. Fortunately, one of our neighbors had the guts to come over and tell us that they heard Amanda was in an accident. She gave me the address of where the accident was, less than a mile from our house. So I headed over there and ran into the yellow tape, so I couldn't get all the way to the accident. So I see a cop there and was about to approach him when a flatbed truck went by with a car on it that was totally squished. Seeing that car, I could tell whoever was in that wasn't going to be in good shape. And I just about collapsed and had to grab the stop sign from falling over. The cop just told me to go home. A little while later, we got called by Eastern Hospital to come down there. My wife and I drove down here. It was a very quiet ride down. My wife said, you realize this might be bad news, and I didn't even respond. We get down there, and after it seemed like an hour, but I think it was only five minutes, we got called back into a room with a guy in green. They don't sugarcoat it. He just said, Amanda Schultz passed this morning at 6.30. Now at this point, it's like new. But we're just finding out. Amanda had no ID on her. So they didn't know who to contact. They didn't know who she was. So we had to do the identify the body. And actually, when they pulled the sheet away, we couldn't recognize Amanda. Her head was so smashed in, we couldn't recognize her face. We couldn't recognize her clothes. Now we really identified with her was, when she was very young, she didn't suck her thumb. She sucked her finger. And because of that, it was a little bit shriveled compared to her other fingers. So that's how we officially identified the man. So a couple of bad decisions she made that day. One, getting in the car with the drunk driver. Two, was not wearing her seatbelt. She was in the back seat. The car hit a tree. She flew out and her head hit the tree. Between the viewing and the funeral it was a blur. The trial wasn't until 10 months later. Amanda's birthday that year was also Father's Day. Turns out to be a very difficult day for me. Now it just so happens, 11 years later, Father's Day this year is Amanda's birthday. Seniors, do not jeopardize your life or your future. Do not get into a vehicle with someone who has been drinking. Do not drive a vehicle if you have been drinking. It is so much easier 
to say no if other people have already said it. Say no. Set an example. Every 15 minutes, somebody dies from an alcohol-related incident. Every 15 minutes. We want to change that statistic. It has to start somewhere. It has to start sometime. What better place than Easton? And what better time than today? Thank you. up this morning and I heard the news I know the pain of a heart break I don't have answers and neither do you I know the pain of a heart break yeah Confusion and the doubts you had Up and walk away, they walk away When a heart breaks I heard the doctor what did he say? I knew I was fine about this time yesterday. Well, I don't need answers. Well, I just need some peace. I just need someone. 